Hi, welcome to the Shop Notes podcast. It's our very first episode. We're hoping to do this once a week. We'll talk about woodworking, tools, techniques, and what's going on on our workbenches. We hope to see you every week. This episode of the Shop Notes podcast is brought to you by Woodsmith Plans. You'll find nearly a thousand plans covering everything that you'd want to build, from furniture projects to gift projects, kitchen accessories, workshop projects and jigs, and more. Find your next project at woodsmithplans.com. Hey, welcome to Woodsmith Podcast. I am Logan Whitmer. I'm John Doyle. And I'm Phil Huber. Yeah. We're talking today about what's on our workbench. I don't have anything on my workbench. Wow. I'm in a shop funk. I don't know if you guys ever get in shop funks. I know John has shop smells, like, but I don't I feel know. like you didn't do your homework for this. <laughs> no, so we've had a, a busy uh, summer, kind of, and you know, between getting the house ready to go on the market and stuff, I just I finished up a couple projects, left a couple unfinished, and I am just not. I haven't been motivated to start anything mm -hmm. in the shop, but. Or motivated to finish it. Or motivated. <laughs> True. Uh, I think that with the weather kind of changing, it's cool out now. I'm kind of getting the urge to get back in the shop. So I think uh, here in the next couple weeks, I'm going to start on a set of dining room chairs. Oh, in my really? house. Yeah. Uh, the table will come later because my, my children are buttheads. And, and I don't really want to uh, start a or build a kitchen table where they're going to stab their forks every night. Uh, or get mustard all over the table. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll start with a set of chairs. How and many are you going to make? I'm going to do six, I think. Because okay. I think what oh, I'm going to do is... Big family uh, coming. No, John Doyle. <laughs> no. Hey, I started with like six chairs I, and had four kids. I know and you did. all are filled now. Yeah. So. No, I think that I will do six because I think I'm going to do a trestle style table mm -hmm. uh, as the end goal. So having an extra pair of chairs just for people when they come over um, will be good. But I think I'm going to... Take my table, which is pretty junky now. I mean, we've had it for seven or eight years. It's been through two kids. And I'm just going to chop the legs down because it's a counter height table. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to chop the legs down, drop it down mm -hmm. to whatever chairs I end up building. So I think maybe this weekend coming up, I will pull some of my walnut into the house, finish it drying. Um, right now it's outside. Uh, it's probably at about 15% moisture content. Mm -hmm. Pull some into the basement, get it completely dry before... Filling our shop here full of walnut dust. Ooh, I can't so, wait. I know, right? I know. <laughs> it's my favorite kind but of dust. But I did, I did make some progress last night. I uh, threw some stuff in the vacuum chamber at home, so there was. Uh, so how often do you get a f workshop funk? Uh, not terribly often. Yeah. Um, I think it's just when big stuff outside of work gets going on, you know. So we we decided this summer to list our house. So there was some house projects to finish up, stuff like that. Um, and it was one of those, it's like, well, I had just finished a set of kitchen cabinets for my wife's office because she's working from home now. And our realtor walks through and says, hey, you need to pull all these down because it makes the room look a little smaller. It's like, oh, I just finished those. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's been more of, you know, other stuff going on, just, yeah, you know, taking up some shop yeah, time. I kind of so. get that way, too, when I finish a big project or... You know, oh, well, I'll let you know when I finish. Yeah, yeah I exactly. I have a lot of big yeah. projects that and aren't that, quite finished. Yeah, but. and I do have stuff that I work on, you know, every couple, you know, every other night or so. Um, mm -hmm. I have a hardware cart uh, from building props on for a show that's been on my bench for a while. So uh, I'm making progress on that whenever my son wants to go down and work in the shop. That's what we go do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. So cool. what about you, John? Um, well, I was in the kind of a funk too, I guess, yeah. after the after we had our live event, the Woodsmith Workshop. We were really busy with that. Mm -hmm. The way I kind of get out of a funk is like just start with a small project that I can finish maybe in one day or one sitting sure. or whatever. And um, a few months ago, I had built a uh, laminated shop mallet um, for video. I think you can find that video on YouTube. I was um, building a shop mallet out of scrap wood. I ended mm -hmm. up giving that one to my dad that I built and uh, I kind of needed one for myself at home so I decided to go through our scrap wood pile here at work and yeah. uh, found enough uh, wood to make uh, three of them actually. So so the original mallet had uh, some laminated, you know, thin laminated layers of I believe um, was Liptus and Maple and I mm -hmm. had built the one for mm -hmm. my dad out of European Beach in Wingate but it's just thin layers. So I went a little bit different approach and kind of just went with a accent, you know, a thicker accent layer in the middle and came up with a little bit different look and 
kind of like that, but had enough wood to, to make three of them. So now I'm, I'm set. I just need to learn, sure. to, learn to juggle maybe. <laughs> yeah. and I'm, I'm good to go on mallets for a while. Yeah, so. well, and it, something like those mallets are cool because they use up the, sh the scraps that we always get, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and as you were lifting up the, the older mallet that we have here um, from the original article, it reminded me of some elm I had. Or mm -hmm. I, I still have, yeah. and it's it's one of those things that I don't have enough to do a big project out of. But I have, you know, a couple of crotch sections that are thicker. Um, you might do some turning with some of them, but it'd be a cool, you know, if you have something weird that you don't have a ton of, it's kind of a good yeah. kind of one off. Yeah, right. Yeah, not necessarily the scrap size stuff, stuff that's a little bit bigger, yeah. but it's kind of a cool thing to do a little run of projects with. Yeah, so. yeah, I agree with that. Well, it's like that stuff that you want to. It's like too much to just throw away or burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not big enough to really do like a full size project yeah, yeah. with. So yeah. maybe like the exotic wood that you paid a lot of money <laughs> yeah. for, but you only right. have a little tiny piece left. Yeah, and, exactly. And you want to do something with it. So it's always kind of fun to maybe make a hand tool or, or something for yourself. Yeah. And that's you funny because I, I mean, in my garage, I have a bunch of lumber in there and I have a, a lumber rack mounted to the wall. And I have one kind of miscellaneous shelf on there. It's like I have some Kentucky coffee oh, yeah, wood yeah. in there. It's like, you know, I got some elm up there. I just random stupid stuff I've picked mm -hmm. up over the years that I thought was cool and I want to work with, but there's not a ton of it. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, fun project. Yep. So the next project I kind of want to do that goes with that is a uh, round turn mallet. Um, it's kind of like got that glued up, laminated look to it as well. And even though it's round, it wasn't turned on the lathe. I believe this was all done on the router table. So it's got a lot of cool techniques and jigs that go with it. So I kind of want to try that out next to, to go with the, my other mallets. So it yeah. doesn't take very much wood, like yeah. I said. You know, I've seen some guys on YouTube that will make mallets like this. I mean, it's kind of like a, what you call it, standard carver's mallet. Carver's mallet, the tapered round head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen guys will make these heads out of, you know, like, melted down milk jugs and stuff. Oh, and make really? super oh. dense ones. I think that'd be kind of fun, too. Mm -hmm. I think you'd probably be able to machine it on the I would think you could. router table as well. Yeah. So I've seen layers of, um, like, leather, yeah. too. Yeah, They'll make those out of, and it's just a good way to use up whatever scrap materials you have yep. laying around. So Just infuse it, too. Yeah, yeah you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my project is a bunch of, uh, and you guys have been victimized by me showing these off to you for quite <laughs> some right. time That's all right. They're cool. Uh, my Christmas project this year for both sides of the family, actually, are going to be a set of spoons. Mm -hmm. And I'm finally on the last set, which is this, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's almost like a spatula. Spatula meets a spoon. Spatula scooper meets spoon. Type. Scooper. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted it to be something that you could use for cooking, but also for serving. Sure. As well. And... This one, I think, has been my favorite design yeah. so far. Yep, I think out of all of them you showed us, I like that one the best. Mm -hmm. So when I've been making these, I've used a couple of patterns. Mm -hmm. I made a top view pattern and then a side view profile pattern, and then I cut out blanks at the bandsaw, which I realize is a little unorthodox for the folk that say that you have to use a bunch of hatchets and knives and stuff yeah. like that. But to me, it was just a quicker way to get to where I wanted to go because I wanted the pieces to look like they were hand carved. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been fighting on all of them, the difference between having like the really smooth, very yeah. fluid shape versus something that still has the facets of something mm -hmm. that's been carved with edge tools, whether yeah. it's, you know, round gouges for the inside of the bowl or spoke shave or draw knife. Yeah. Or, and I think it's interesting because I think you have, you have a balance there, right? It's, it's a dance between handmade with the facets, which is a really cool, interesting texture yeah. to add to something. Uh, but you also, we, we all have this this idea that, you know, the tools we purchase for cooking in the store are smooth and fluid, fluid. and that's right. what it look like, but not necessarily. Right. And those are probably all machine. I'm sure, and, yeah. And hand or, uh, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I also feel, and this is probably my own malfunction in it, is at what point does it just feel like it's... Uh, just too primitive yeah you know yeah. like hey look i gave a third grader a knife and this is what he came up exactly. with you know i yeah. want it to look yep. like it's skillfully carved mm -hmm. and not just kind of hacked out yeah which i think these I like that. yeah these look good um i don't know that there's anything i would personally change on the design i like that i like the facets it's interesting to hold um yeah and i i think i said this last week when you brought this up one thing i would say is if i was going to make these which i probably am going to because i've been very uh 
inspired by your spoon carving. Uh, so I might make a few of them. I would make a couple of these, I think, that had a completely flat tip for scraping hmm. the bottom of a, yeah. a, a pan, but those would be more a cooking utensil where you said these are dual function, right. where they can be serving as well. Well, you know, and I've been, I've done a few spoons in the past, mm -hmm. and they've always been kind of a one-off. So I get done with it, and I think, eh, you know, it's good, but I think it could have been better. Yeah. Having done these sets where I'm making, you know, I'm yeah, making seven them. sets, yeah. so I'm making seven iterations of each one that yeah. as I go along, I've learned more of, I mean, I hate to sound all you know, zen about it or whatever, but more of what that spoon shape really wants to be. Because yeah. I think there's, you know, that transition between the spoon bowl and the handle is pretty important. Yeah. The feel of the handle in your hand, like especially the end, you know, not necessarily the middle of the handle, but the end of it. Because when you're, this one, when I'm using it, I want it to be able to be comfortable when you're mm -hmm. scooping something out of a pan. But then also, I was thinking if you're using it for cooking, you'll use it upside down to scrape or yeah. move stuff around. Yep. And I want that, that end of the yep. handle to fit in your hand without being sharp. Mm -hmm. And then like you said, the end of the spoon itself. So that's like the yeah. three areas. Yep. And it, it's almost like I have to do one of these spoons before I figure out, oh, that's what that transition from the bowl into the handle needs to feel like, or that's what I need to, yeah. that's what I want to feel when I have the spoon upside down for scraping or. Well, and I, I like the way you put it, you know, your, your Zen phrase is what the spoon wants to be, because there is a shape that looks right. Right. You know, there, there is a shape that looks right. And when you, I think when you get it, you, you know it, I mean, yeah. you know that's right. So. And it's interesting. So once I figure that out, you know, the next spoons go a lot faster to make. Sure. And it feels like they find that that shape a lot easier. Yeah. Because I've looked at some of the earlier spoons that I've done, and mm -hmm. I guess that maybe that's where I feel like I've had that idea where, you know, this was a Boy Scout project from somebody's sure. very first time with a pen knife kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Sure. Well, and you said you had gotten down to what, about an hour per spoon is what you were aiming at? That's kind of what I was aiming at, you yeah. know, starting with the the sawn blank. Yep. You know, I think it would take longer if I were, you know, if I count that bandsawing in. But even, you know, I bandsawed seven blanks, and that's with all the tracing and cutting yeah. and whatever, and that's still, for all seven, only adds another half hour. Sure. So... And you said you used air dried walnut. Have you ever carved using green wood or I have. how does that compare? Well, my first set of spoons that I did was some birch that came from the yard of the house where I grew up at. Mm -hmm. So it had some mm -hmm. sentimental value to it yeah. and it had started to spalt. But I mean, you've talked about this in the past too, Logan, like look, birch is really nice and then goes bad yes. almost instantly. Yeah, it gets really punky. And I had those spa spots, because I really like the spalting look of it, yeah. those black lines as they kind of weave around and a little yep. bit of the color change. Yeah. But you get to those parts where you're carving mm -hmm. along and it's this real shimmery, you know, it just wants to carve real nicely with mm -hmm. tools. And yep. then you get to the spot just past a spalt line or something and it's like you're trying to carve styrofoam. Exactly, you know? yeah. yeah. And there's, there's a couple different woods that do that. And did you do a coffee scoop out of one of out of that birch? Or what yeah, I did. It was, it was a coffee scoop. Yeah. That was the birch, too. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, guys, it's, it's spalted. You can't use that for food. It's like, nah, yeah, not no. really. We eat mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, bread, yeah. 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 And I've done some research on it, and what I found is that there are, I mean, there's just so much, there's so many mold spores in the air already, you know, yeah. that what you're encountering in spalted wood is not in any higher concentration. And usually by the time that wood finishes drying out, yeah. you know, that when you're done using it as a spoon, the the mold is either dead or inert or whatever. So exactly. it's not yeah. not gonna cause a problem. Sure. Well, hopefully next week I will have a project started. John, you yeah. should probably have some round yeah, mouths going. I can get started on the round mouths. You gotta glue up a blank first and should get started then. Yeah. And Phil, you should probably have your spoons done. I'd like to have them done and get the finish on it so that they're not smelly by the time people have to open them for Christmas. Exactly. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find this podcast wherever you get your podcasts regularly. Join us again next week when we find out what else is on our workbench. See you then. This episode of the Shop Notes podcast is brought to you by Woodsmith Magazine. Woodsmith Magazine has been the trusted source for all your woodworking information for over 40 years. From tips and techniques to furniture projects, to shop projects. You can find it all in Woodsmith Magazine. Subscribe today at woodsmith.com.